So today I'm going to be talking about a big problem for media buyers, tracking. Tracking is one of those things where everybody kind of tries to figure out how do you do it in the right way, the most correct way. So today I'm going to introduce you to our method of what should be the most accurate way I know to track YouTube ads. Before we get into the video, I would love for you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that notification button if you haven't already. This way you will not miss any of the new content we make for you every week. Thanks a lot in advance. All right, so the first thing before going on, we need to consider what are we trying to accomplish with setting up this tracking, right? Most of the time, it's one of the two things, either optimization or return investment tracking. And again, I want to preface that this is just my views on how this should be done. There's many different philosophies and people do it differently, way, differently but this is how I like doing it. So I look at two things. I look at macro view on tracking and micro view on tracking, right? Macro view, in my opinion, should always be related to overall profitability of the advertising as a whole, not necessarily advertising as in is Facebook more profitable than YouTube? I paid that question because they're just different, right? All, all you need to do is literally just go, hey, so I invested $10,000 on advertising as a whole and I made $20,000 worth of sales. So now I get 2x return on my investment. Great, perfect. Okay, no issues. The reason why I'm saying that is because one will be 100% accurate. It's like you can trace very precisely that your sales came from advertising. Deciding between Facebook and YouTube which one is more profitable, it's very hard exercise to do 100% accurately. It's probably impossible because there's attribution issues, there is, you know, one steals from another issues. So, in my opinion, you just optimize each individual platform with the data that you get from it. And as long as your overall macro picture is profitable, you're doing good. And then you just optimize performance because you can see whether, whether the campaign is performing well or it's not uh, performing well on the platform, right? But comparing them is not, is not a good idea in my opinion. So how do you do this micro optimization? And, and you know, all th this tutorial is specifically about setting up tracking on YouTube and how to do it in a, in a very simple way that's pretty accurate, right? So I'm talking about this micro optimization of the actual performance of a pl particular platform, specifically YouTube in this example, but the same thing can be set up on Facebook. You just need to look up the same principles essentially. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we're gonna decide what we're optimizing for. So you know, you can optimize for sales, you can optimize for leads, you can optimize for opt-ins, whatever it is. Then we're going to set up tracking. And then finally, we're going to have a way to import the data back into the AdWords platform in order to actually do the optimization. I'm going to use sales as in, in this example, uh, because personally, I think of it as a primary metric when you do direct sales through advertising, right? So if, you, if you're not optimizing for sales, you're optimizing for a lesser KPI, like let's say opt-ins, uh, you might be trying to solve a specific problem like you know conversion rates on the landing page, which is absolutely valid, but ultimately the performance of the campaign will always be uh, you know, uh, related to the actual sales. So rela relating uh, the actual, how do you get to a sale process, right? So that's what I'm gonna use in this example. And we're gonna use YouTube as an example, like so buying on YouTube. So we use uh, Jiklids to track conversion da data in this example. Uh, we're gonna store the Jiklid data in the CRM and link it to a, an email of that lead, right? So that's the crucial part within this process. Then once the sale happens, the data will be exported in the report and then we're gonna import Jiklid's IDs that have sales on them back into AdWords for optimization. All right, so let's first look look at some definitions. So what is a Jiklid ID? A Jiklid ID ends up being a URL parameter, so you need to understand what the hell it is in the first place, right? So a URL parameter is very, very simple. It's just how the data is encoded 
when it's transmitted through the internet, right? So I'm gonna use a very simple for example of a form. So let's say you have a form on your website uh, on a landing page and it just says there's name and email, that's it. So name equals Alex, I completed it. And then email equals alex at email.com, very simple. So when you click on submit, it submits this data, right? So somewhere, let's say this is active campaign, right? So it says, submits this string to active campaign, right? And essentially this form data will become encoded like this. But there's other parameters that you can add to it, such as hidden parameters, right? UTMs, for example, and they would be added to this. So there would be another end symbol and then a UTM parameter or a G click ID parameter or whatever other parameter you want, right? And then when this data is received by software like Active Campaign, there is a there's a script on that software that will decode this data back into fields and automatically put them inside that software. It will import that data automatically, right? So this is what a URL parameter is. It's very simple. It's just a way for web pages to communicate to, with each other. That's all it is. So what is a JCLit ID? Essentially, Google Click Identifier is just a way for AdWords to auto tag your URL with some encoded data that essentially contains full campaign information, right? So it kind of looks like this, this big long string uh, with numbers and letters. And it, it has all information that a UTM would have in one shot, as well as some additional things that UTMs don't have, like session identification. So this number is actually unique to each session that the lead does, right? And it's really valuable because you can get more information from it automatically just by importing this data back into, into AdWords directly, right? UTMs is just a way of identifying where it came from, right? But this gives you, just, it's like UTM on steroids essentially, and that's why we use it. Uh, how we use it specifically is we use it to label the first step that a lead takes, right? So, uh, you know, let's say a lead saw a YouTube ad, they clicked on the ad, and this session ID, this this UTA, this jiclet um, uh, was given to them. So it's like a, a unique uh, identifier for that lead, and then we link it in a C, C, in a CRM to an email because they have to give us an email address in order for them to to continue down that uh, funnel. So we're going to assign, we're going to link the JCLit ID to an email address in the CRM. That's the crucial portion of it that makes it all work. And then there's going to be obvious other steps like, you know, they might have gone to Facebook and saw another ad and, and came back to the same funnel and then completed the form again and did it again. So for every consecutive step, we're going to use tags to add to that lead, to record the customer journey, right? And the reason why we use tags is because tags have, they're very flexible, right? You can add many tags to the same lead and record the journey, but they have two aspects to them. They have the name of the tag and the date. So we can actually put it in a chronological order of what they did specifically uh, throughout this funnel and when. All right, so let's now look at the functional example. Uh, like I tried to make it as realistic as possible. Uh, so this is gonna be an auto webby to sales funnel webinar. That's what I call it. Uh, essentially, all it is, it's just a, a, it's automatic webinar that uses, so there's no other sales steps. It's the, the product is being sold through this automated webinar and the prospect get so much value from that webinar that essentially they just click on the buy button and make a purchase as a result of viewing that webinar. So let's look at the software that we're using in this example. I chose very simple software that's very common in uh, most marketing funnels. Uh, so click funnels for lead capture webinar or, and registration for the webinar, then webinar software for the sales aspect of it, right? And then shopping cart for actually processing the sale and then HubSpot uh, as a way to record all the data. All right, so, so this is the meats and, meat and potatoes now. So this is how we set up this whole tracking. Uh, in the ad, what we need to do is we need to construct the URL. Uh, it's not gonna be 
a URL that leads to your landing page. It's going to be a URL that has specific UTM parameters, namely this GClick ID parameter, right? And it will be present in every one of your ads. So you're going to add this UTM content parameter with, G, with a dynamic GClick ID um, uh, like this, right? So I'll explain what this is in AdWords. Whenever there's curly brackets, it means it's a dynamic parameter. So to AdWords, this will say that you need to auto tag this click with a GClick ID uh, identifier, right? So all we do is when we're setting up our campaigns, we need to set up URLs for every link that we're going to put in the campaign with this GClick ID. And I put them in the UTM content uh, UTM parameter, mainly because it's often not used. There's no other reason. You do not need to do it, but there's an advantage because a lot of softwares like ClickFunnels are automatically set up to capture these UTM parameters right away. So you don't need to do anything else to capture this UTM parameter. It will happen auto automatically, right? So as soon as the lead comes in, they clicked on this link, the ClickFunnels will know that if they sent an email, if they complete a, an opt-in form, it will automatically import this UTM parameter in the GClick ID as part of this lead, right? So uh, you don't need to do anything. However, if there is, if you're using a software that doesn't have that, you can do the same thing with JavaScript. So the second step we're going to do is we're going to need to set up our HubSpot to have a custom field that will be this GClick ID, right? Because GClick IDs usually by default, they're not part of the software package. And we want to, we want to basically have that uh, as, sep as a separate field so we can make reports afterwards in order for us to identify which leads turned into sales and which didn't. So, so all you do is you, s you set up a custom field in HubSpot and call it GClick ID. That's it. Okay, now uh, the thing that makes it work is that we're going to start using automation. So either through Webhook or through Zapier automation, automatically, as soon as there's an opt-in on ClickFunnels side, it will trigger an event in Zapier and it will import this email, this lead data, including this GClick ID into, uh, into like a customer in HubSpot or a contact in HubSpot. And we're going to now not use this UTM content uh, parameter anymore. We're going to set up, we're going to essentially take the content of this UTM content, the GClick ID, because we put it in, in this one, we're going to automatically put it into this proper GClick ID uh, uh, field in HubSpot, right? So it's it, very simple. They click here, ClickFunnels records, uh, records an opt-in, it triggers a Zapier automation or a webhook, and then sends that data automatically to HubSpot and records this GClick ID along with uh, the rest of the, the lead data, right? Okay, so now on the sales side, what we're going to do is we're going to set up another automation where Zapier, as soon as there is a smart cart sale, they will trigger another automation that will add a new tag in HubSpot saying that there was a sale, right? So it's literally going to be as soon as there is a sale, Zapier triggers an automation and it will, it will put a tag on that lead saying, oh, there is a sale. And after, at this, as soon as the sale happens, what we can do is we can now run a report and basically run a report for all contacts that have this sale tag associated with them, right? Because it only happens when there's an actual sale. And then include your click ID field that we set up earlier with this report. So we have, we have, uh, basically like a lead information that includes this GClick ID data. And then we can just literally uh, use a GClick import template and import it back into AdWords. And now this, now our sale data will become linked to specific campaigns that brought that lead in the first place. And the ones that didn't, we can just turn off, right? So we we'll literally keep the ones that 
that are profitable for us and we get rid of the ones that are not profitable. And that's how you make this, uh, this whole uh, tracking work. So very, very easy concept and it can be applied to very, very different, many different uses. And many softwares provide you something similar, but it's very complicated and they have lots of problems in terms of you know, how the attribution is set up, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, this is a very simple way to accomplish uh, something that you have 100% control over. And again, uh, you know, some replacements. So for example, you don't necessarily need to optimize for sales. You can optimize for any steps in your funnel, right? You can optimize for opt-ins, for anything you want. But the G-Click ID data it gives you a manual way to link it to campaigns only when events happen, right? It's very, very precise because it's a, it's, it's a manual way to kind of importing the data back, right? So it's very precise and you don't have to wait for, um, you know, for the attribution to come in when you're doing, when you're using these automated uh, ways to track conversions, right? Because this is done manually, it happens instantly. Uh, so as soon as there is a sale, there's going to be an event associated with that and you can import that data back into AdWords. Um, so if you're using uh, lead capture software that doesn't automatically store UTMs, because sometimes, let's say you're using WordPress, it won't do it by default. So you need to, uh, you need to essentially capture those UTM parameters manually. Uh, all of this can be done through either plugins or JavaScript, right? So uh, just talk to your developer and it can be easily set up. It's very easy to do. And um, you can pretty much set up, you can pretty much set the system up in any CRM that allows you to, to have custom fields. Uh, I like using tags, but it's not necessary. You can literally just do it through custom fields. It will work the same way. So that's pretty much it. Hopefully this was helpful.